Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we had already covered the introduction for AWS Kinesis and today we are going to discuss about AWS Kinesis data streams. So if you're ready, let's begin. So until now, we have only discussed all the theoretical aspects of all the possible scenarios that you should know for Kinesis. I mean, more or less, it's very much covered. But now let's dig deep into how the data streams are processed. And this is very important for understanding how we make decisions when we use Kinesis for data streaming. Okay, so using KDS, we can collect and process large streams of data records in real time. And we can create data processing applications, which are also known as Kinesis data streams applications. So understand this very carefully that the Kinesis data streams application reads data from a data stream which is a data record and we can send these processed records to dashboards and use them for generating alerts, dynamically changing prices or using it for advertising strategies, sending data to a variety of other AWS services. And these are some of the examples that we have discussed before as well. So when we ask ourselves, what can I do with Kinesis data streams? There are a few points that we have here that we can discuss. The first one is accelerated log and data feed intake and processing. So with KDS, we have producers that can push data directly into streams. With this, what happens is even if there is an application server failure, the data isn't lost. So the second point is real-time metrics and reporting. Here you can use data collected into Kinesis data streams for simple data analysis and reporting in real time. The third one is real-time data analytics. Uh, we can make multiple Kinesis data stream applications running in parallel to make real-time data processing and analytics much faster. Okay, so that was the third point. And the fourth one is complex stream processing. So we can have complex stream processing by transferring data from various Kinesis data stream applications to another stream for downstream processing through different Kinesis data stream applications. So if you already have a Kinesis data stream application, that stream of data as well, you can downstream it so that you can process it using another consumer or another Kinesis data stream application as well. So that is what we call as complex stream processing. And if you need to understand the working mechanism of AWS Kinesis data streams, we need to have a proper knowledge on these four concepts. So the first one is data streams. The second one is producers. The third one is consumers. And the fourth one is quota. So we will discuss one by one all of these don't worry about it. The first one that we are going to discuss is data streams. Okay, so as we all know, Kinesis data streams inserts a huge amount of data in real time and every unit of data stored by Kinesis data streams is obviously called as a data record. Okay, and data streams is a group of data records and data records in data streams are distributed into shards. Okay, so I told you three things here. One is the data record, so which is the unit of data that we store in Kinesis data streams that is the data record and a group of data record which is basically your data streams and the data that you have or the data records in the data streams are distributed into shards okay so you can imagine them shards as like a pipeline okay just remember that for now don't worry about this we'll discuss this okay so next up is producers so it's simple a producer is an entity that puts data records into uh, Kinesis data streams and the next one is consumers. So if you have a producer to push the data into KDS, we will obviously have a consumer that uses these data to be processed. Okay. So a consumer are known as an Amazon Kinesis data streams application. So if you have this correlation, whenever I'm speaking about a consumer, you have to remember that I'm talking about Kinesis data streams application. So if I speak about Kinesis data streams applications, then you have to correlate it, it with like I'm talking about a consumer. And last but not least, quota. So quotas are referred to as limits and are the maximum values for the resources, actions and items in your AWS account. So any resource that you use in your account depends on the limit or quota you are eligible for. Okay, I think everyone is pretty much aware of this one. And mostly if you want to increase the limit or quota, we actually contact AWS support so they can help us uh, increase our quota. Here as well, we can have a quota on the number of streams you can have in an account uh, or you can as well increase or decrease the number of shards in the stream. Okay, you can read about this in detail in AWS documentation, but we will have a short slide on this as well 
uh, talking about all the points that are mentioned in quota i hope this was clear let's move on i know you guys might be feeling that i'm talking so much in depth about data and streams but please listen to these very carefully because you will have so many questions asked to you in your work or when you go up to designing application so i think this is a really important thing to actually understand them very carefully so getting back to the topic of kinesis data streams as we have discussed already uh, this a number of times now that it inserts a huge amount of data and stores them securely and makes that data available for consumption so understand this very carefully that every unit of data stored by kds is a data record i already told you this every unit of data stored by kds is a data record and a group of data record makes up a data stream and data records in data streams are distributed into shards so this is a very uh, interesting example of broken mirror that a piece of broken mirror that is particularly a glass is called a shard if you know the english meaning of this one so if i say it's a shard then a collection of shard combined makes up the whole data structure or the mirror isn't it so if you consider that as a same example of what i'm trying to say for the data streams so you will understand that each record or the data records in the data streams are distributed into shards so imagine them as a basically a pipeline okay so when it comes to kinesis we have a default shard limit of 500 per stream in the us east us west and europe for all other regions the default shard quota is 200 shards per data stream and the producer is the one who is responsible to put the data records into the shards and the consumer gets data records from the shards itself so see the visualization here we have a data record so as i already told you before that every unit of data stored by kinesis data streams is a data record and data stream represents a group of data records okay so this is the data stream a group of data records and what i told you about shards the data records in a data streams are distributed into shards so let's suppose is a shard there can be multiple shards which combined makes up a data stream okay so as i told you data records in a data stream are distributed into shards so this is one of the shard and there can be multiple shards having multiple data records and the data records are distributed and the data records are distributed among the data shards and the data records are distributed among the shards and all of this combined makes up a data stream so whenever you push a data so basically every unit of data that you have in kds is a data record so imagine this as your record or your data so presumably you will have a option to choose the data stream that you have and based on that you will be inserting your record into a shard and the consumer also will be consuming the data record from the shard itself so the communication or the input and output basically is from the data shard and that basically comprises of the data stream so i hope this was clear let's move on so when you designing an application with kds you will always be concerned with the budget and you will always be looking into ways to how you can design the applications effectively and for that you need to know how much data is your application capable of processing and how much price you are willing to pay to get the clear idea of this so i have already explained you before every unit of data that is pushed is a basically a data record and the collection of data records is known as data streams but it's not a single stream of data we actually learned a new term called shards which is responsible for the distribution of the data records in the stream so as we know a set of data record forms a shard logically a group of shards form a data streams so ultimately the data remains in the shard within the data stream and if you need to understand how much load your application can take we need to understand what should be the initial size of a shard okay so to get this let us determine the initial size of a kinesis data stream and let's do some calculations here okay so the formula to derive the number of shards is basically maximum of incoming write bandwidth by 1024 and outgoing read bandwidth by 2048 okay so there are three terms here so there are three terms here one is average data size in kb so the average size of the data record written to the stream in kilobytes so it is rounded up to the nearest 1 kb that is the data size okay so basically this is the ingress value or the incoming data value okay so this is the average size of the data record written into the stream 
or written to the stream okay and the next one is records per second so the number of data records written to and read from the stream per second so how many data are you assuming uh, that the application is going to read or how much data or how much record or how many records that you think that the application is going to write into kds that you have to configure that okay and the number of consumers so the number of consumers as i already said consumers when i speak of consumers think of kinesis data streams applications so the number of kinesis data stream application that consume data concurrently and independently from the stream that is the consumers okay so these are the three input variables that we have so based on that we will be forming the incoming write bandwidth and we will be forming the outgoing read bandwidth as well okay so the first thing that we have to calculate is incoming write bandwidth so this is the average data size in kilobytes multiplied by the records per second okay and the next thing is outgoing read bandwidth so that is calculated with the incoming write bandwidth into the number of consumers this is going to be the how much amount of data that is going to be read by the consumers and ultimately we can derive the formula number of shards is equal to the max value of incoming write bandwidth by 1024 outgoing read bandwidth in kilobytes by 2048 and there is one more term that you need to understand that has been taken in consideration in aws price calculator as well shards needed for records so shards needed for records is equal to the number of records per second divided by thousand factor for records per shard so records per second is basically this one the number of data records written to and read from the stream per second okay so based on these values and the maximum of this one we will be getting the number of shard values okay and based on that only you will be paying the price to aws so the more the number of shards you will have to pay more amount of money to aws okay so this might be a bit confusing for most of you but i would request you to have some patience i will show you a real-time example here as well so this is the real-time example that i wanted to show so determining the initial size of a kinesis data stream so let's suppose if you go to the aws price calculator there you will get a form where you can calculate the number of uh, shards that we need so i have taken that example from there itself so here what i'm giving is number of records is 50 per second and average record size is 64 kb and number of consumer application that is basically your kinesis data streams application so the number of that is 10 that is what i'm taking here okay so the first thing that i wanted to calculate was incoming right bandwidth in kb by 1024 okay so here the 64 average data record that we have we have divided that into 1024 so that we can convert it effectively when we convert it into mbs so the value comes around 0 0.0625 okay so that is the record size then we multiply this record size into the records per second that is the 50 records per second so we get 3.13 mb per second this is the data ingress rate okay then what we do is we calculate the shards needed for ingress that is the write capacity that we need for the ingress value that is the incoming one okay so 3.13 mb per second by 1 mb so this is what we are trying to calculate here incoming bandwidth by 1024 so we are doing it ahead of time okay so here once we have calculated this we get 3.13 shards needed for ingress okay so now that we have got the shards needed for ingress that is basically our incoming right bandwidth in kb so what we have the formula for outgoing read bandwidth it is basically your incoming right bandwidth in kb multiplied by number of consumer so this value that you have here 3.13 into 10 okay so you get 31.30 mb per second so that is data egress rate or outgoing so always remember when you think of ingress it is always about incoming requests when you talk about egress it is always about outgoing requests okay so data egress rate or the outgoing read bandwidth in kb so the next value that i wanted to calculate was outgoing read bandwidth by 2048 so that is what we are doing it here 31.30 mb per second divided by 2 mb per second per shard egress capacity so when you divide this by 2 mb so what happens is you get 15.65 shards needed for egress so now we have shards needed for ingress and we have also calculated the shards needed for egress okay so we have calculated both the incoming write value and the outgoing read value so now we have to calculate 
what? So we have to now calculate charts needed for record. So that is basically your number of records per second divided by 1000 factor for records per shard. So how much records we have here? 50 records by 1000. So we get 0 0.05 shards needed per record. So ultimately what we needed is number of shards is equal to the max value of incoming write bandwidth and outgoing read bandwidth and shards needed for records. So ultimately that is what we are doing max value of 3.13 that we calculated as the shards needed for ingress and 15.65 that is the shards needed for egress this is the one that we calculated and 0 0.05 shards needed for records so ultimately the maximum value is 15.65 so 15.65 is the number of shards okay so we round up and then we get 16 shards so 16 shards is what you need when you have number of records is 50 per second and average record size is 64 kb and there are 10 number of applications or consumer applications okay so if you have 16 shards what is the price that you have to pay so the price is basically calculated by multiplying the number of shards into the hours in a month so you have 16 shards into 730 hours in a month that's 730 hours is basically an average of 30 and 31 days so they calculated based on that so when you multiply 16 shards into 730 hours in a month you will get 11680 shard hour per month as with us dollar pricing you have 0 0.0175 and when you try to convert it into what amount you're going to pay you're going to pay 204 dollars per month if you are consuming 11680 shard hours per month okay so this is the basic calculation there's a simple calculation that we have and you can go to the aws calculator and uh, try it yourself by changing these values and you can also see how much amount of value that you're going to pay if you're going to use aws kinesis data streams okay so i hope this was clear let's move on so now we are aware of the calculation of how much we can push data based on the values we have we now have the amount of shards that we want for our design and now let's see how we push the data so the producer puts data records into kinesis data streams and the consumer processes the data records from the stream so this is not a hidden agenda anymore everyone knows about this so as i've already mentioned here to put data into the stream you must specify the name of the stream a partition key and a data blob to be added to the stream and partition keys are values of the data which determine on which node the data has to be stored okay and we can add data to the stream using the put records and the put record operation in the kinesis data streams api so as i say there are two types of put record so one is put record and one is put records okay so these two operations here one is put records and the other one is put record one is singular and one is plural okay so put records writes multiple data records into a kinesis data stream in a single call obviously put record writes a single data record into a kinesis data stream so one is for multiple data records and the other one is single data record insertion what aws tells us is that we must specify the name of the stream that captures stores and transports the data and then a partition key and the data blob itself so as you can see in the requests here as well we have for the put records we have a list here where we can provide the data the explicit hash key that is a string and the partition key as well and you have to provide the stream name and as well you can provide the stream name and here on the put record you have data that is not a list here there is basically a single json so you have the data that is a blob then you have the explicit hash key that is a string the partition key and the sequence number for ordering that is a string as well and the stream name okay and the partition key is used by kinesis data streams to distribute data across shards and kinesis data streams segregates the data records that belong to a stream into multiple shards using the partition key associated with each data record to determine the shard to which a given data record belongs and here as well there are a few points that i mentioned each put records request can support up to 500 records each record in the request can be as large as 1 mb up to a limit of 5 mb for the entire request including partition keys and each shard can contain or each shard can support writes up to 1000 records per second up to a maximum data write total of 1 mb per second and each shard can support writes up to 1000 records per second up to a maximum data write total of 1 mb per second that is for put record the above one is for put records and the below one is for the put record so let's do a simple deep dive and uh, let's understand what a consumer is so a consumer known as the kinesis data streams application is an application that you build to read and process data records from kinesis data streams 
So you can send stream records directly to services such as Amazon Simple Storage Service or Redshift or as well you can send the data to Amazon Elasticsearch Service or Splunk for log analysis and monitoring and you can use a Kinesis Data Firehose delivery stream instead of creating a consumer application as well. So these are all the flexibilities that we have already discussed in the part one. So if you haven't seen that please go ahead and watch it and that will be more clear. So this will be actually more clear to you. And the next one that we have here is data streams, quota and limits. Okay, so there are a few points that I have mentioned here. And the very important point that you have to understand is there is no upper quota on the number of streams you can have in an account. And the default shard quota is about 500 shards per data stream in US East, US West and Europe and others it's 200 shards per data stream. So this is basically your default shard quota. And you can as well increase it. A single shard can ingest up to 1 MB of data per second, including partition key or 1000 records per second for writes. If you scale your stream to 5000 starts, the stream can ingest up to 5 GB per second or 5 million records per second as well. So this is for extreme cases where you want to have the major bandwidth that you need. The stream can ingest up to 5 GB per second or 5 million records per second. So you can imagine how much of data can be pushed. And one more thing that was really important for us to understand is get records can retrieve up to 10 MB of data per call from a single shard and up to 10,000 records per call and each call to get records is counted as one retransaction. So each retransaction can provide up to 10,000 records with an upper quota of 10 MB per transaction. That actually is a lot of data records that you can transfer. And there are some constraints as well where each shard can support up to a maximum total data read rate of 2 MB per second via get records. And if a call to get records returns 10 MB, subsequent calls made within the next five seconds throws an exception. Okay, so you have to remember these points when you're trying to design these data streams. Okay, so this is the quota and based on your quota or limit, you can increase it by talking to the AWS support and anytime you can decrease them as per your demand. Okay, so this was all about consumers and quotas and limits. Let's move on. So now that we have discussed in length about all that we know for consuming data streams, let's check the high level architecture of Kinesis data streams. So listen to this very carefully. The first thing that we have is our producers. Okay, so we have the EC2 instance, we have the client, we have the mobile clients, we have the traditional servers like the web servers or log generating services that are basically our traditional services. And using the Kinesis API, we push the data to the Kinesis data streams. And remember this very carefully that a Kinesis data stream is a set of shards. As you can see here, it is a set of shards and each shard has a sequence of data records. And each data record has a sequence number that is assigned by Kinesis data stream. I hope you're all clear what we call as a producer and what we call as a consumer. But you might ask me, I didn't explain sequence number. I'll tell you what you need to know about sequence numbers. So first of all, I'll ask you, do you remember what is a shard? So a shard is a uniquely identified sequence of data records in a stream. So it is basically a uniquely identified sequence of data records in a stream. So this is what I'm trying to refer. So it is a uniquely identified sequence of data records in a stream. Okay. So next I would ask you if ever you have used a database which uses a partition key. If not, then not a problem. So in general, in simple words, a partition key is used to group data by shard within a stream. And Kinesis data stream segregates the data records belonging to the stream into multiple shards. So how does it do that? It uses the partition key that is associated with each data record. So every data record has an associated partition key with each data record to determine which shard a given data record belongs to. So based on the partition key, the data record that you see here knows which shard it belongs to. I am explaining this one more time. So a shard is a uniquely identified sequence of data records in a stream and a partition key is used to group data by shards within a stream. Okay, so when you push the data using the stream name and the partition key, it knows where the data has to be placed in which particular shard. It knows where it has to be placed. Okay, and each data record has a sequence number 
that is unique per partition key within the shard and when we make a put record api call the put record returns the shard id of where the data record was placed and the sequence number that was assigned to the data record so i'll tell you this once again when you make a put record api call the put record returns the shard id of where the data record was placed and the sequence number that was assigned to the data record okay and then when we have our consumers that can process the data which is also called as kinesis data streams application and upon processing the data these data can be stored in one of these useful services like amazon s3 or aws redshift or dynamo db or amazon emr or as well as using amazon kinesis data firehose okay so this is basically a high level architecture of kinesis data streams so i hope it was easy to understand for you if not if you are feeling confusions again read this or watch this video once again or this part particularly once again because i have repeated the terms again and again so if you watch it like multiple times you will be able to get the whole idea of what i'm trying to explain so now we have reached the last topic of the session for kinesis that is security which is probably one of the most important aspects so in aws you will always find a common pattern for every service one will be encryption at rest and the other one will be encryption with server side that is there with most of the services because data you have is either managed by you and data at the aws managed service is managed by aws and the first thing that you have is server side encryption so amazon kinesis data streams automatically encrypts data before it's at rest by using the aws kms mostly it is customer master key or the cmk and data is encrypted before it's written to the kinesis stream then the data is encrypted at rest within the kinesis data stream application or the service okay and aws kms provides all the master keys that are used by the server side encryption and one more important thing that you need to remember is that server side encryption encrypts incoming data only after encryption is enabled so the pre existing data that you have in an unencrypted stream is not encrypted automatically after server side encryption is enabled okay so pre existing data in an unencrypted stream is not encrypted after server side encryption is enabled okay only the server side encryption encrypts incoming data only after the encryption is enabled okay so you have to remember this and this is where our exploration to kinesis comes to an end but there are so many other things that are important in the pursuit of knowledge for kinesis so i would request you to please read the aws documentations for further details and i hope the session was clear enough and if you have any doubts or any confusions or if you think that there are some changes that have to be made or if you want me to make another video of any separate topic that you want then please do write on the comment sections below of what your advices are 